Welcome back. It's the first time I'm using my voice today. <laughs> Welcome back to my garage. Today we will start the brute force concept engine again after replacing the leaky 3D printed parts and reducing the drive ratio to a little bit over 2 to 1. Increasing. The crank has to do about 2.2 turns for the blower to do one turn. So that's a reduction, 2.2 to 1 reduction. In the previous video I said I was going to wait for better weather and do this outside to not set my garage on fire. Still no better weather, so uh, we'll do it inside. I've got the exhaust extraction hooked up here and the uh, fire extinguisher on the ready. One advantage of doing it inside is that it's easier to see the alcohol flames. That's nearly impossible in sunlight. Easier here. So if I'm on fire, I'll, it's, it'll be easier to see it. And I've got a big bucket of water, the coolant, which I can dunk myself in or pour over myself if shit hits the fan. Here's the parts that's been replaced. These were printed out of a carbon fiber nylon. Can withstand the fuel and the heat. And it's, it's stiff and strong, especially when reinforced with carbon fiber. The problem is when I clamp with the clamping bolts, it bows in the middle. They bow in the middle. The only exception is this one. Couldn't get a filler gauge in between this and, uh, and the engine case. But, uh, and that's probably because it's so thick. But I replaced it anyway because I needed uh, a different spot for the, for the blow off valve. I will do some more experimentation and try to find out how to make this work because uh, 3D printing these prototype parts are... It's a great process, it's fast and uh, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Like make really intricate, intricate parts. I've also replaced this pulley. I machined a larger pulley. A quick summary to get everybody on board. This is a supercharged 50cc two-stroke, externally scavenged with a rotary exhaust valve. 35 mm pumper carb with a butterfly valve. ASIN AMR 300 blower. So that's a 300 cc per revolution roots blower. Blower is connected to the crankcase, but the crankcase is not connected to the cylinder via the transfers as it's normally done in a two stroke. Well, it is, but uh, there's reed valves between the case and the cylinder. These are the transfers. There's this external transfers. Case is just used as a plenum. It's also an easy way to get lubrication to the crank without running a separate lubrication system. The blower blows into the case. It blows out through these external transfers, the red hoses you see here, into these boxes, which are connected to reed valves straight into the transfer ports, into the cylinder. Transfer ports are almost as high as the exhaust ports. That's why the reed valves are in there, because the transfer ports open just slightly after the exhaust port and there's higher pressure in the cylinder at that time versus in the in the transfers so that's why the reed valves are there in that way i can keep on charging the cylinder after the exhaust duct is closed the exhaust port is opened and closed normally by the piston but at bottom that center this rotary valve closes off the duct and lets me build pressure just like in a four stroke I'm running methanol with 25% nitromethane. This fuel needs a bit of temperature before it starts burning effectively. Which brings me to this sous vide cooker I've placed in the coolant reservoir. The water is 13 degrees Celsius now. I'll heat it up to about 50 while circulating the water through the engine. We'll have the engine preheated to 50 degrees Celsius before we try starting it. This will take a while. I'll be back when it's uh, up to temperature. It's up to temperature. I'll turn on the exhaust extraction and we'll see if we can get it started. I'll try with a slow drill first. That didn't work last time. Might work now with the preheated engine and the reduced drive ratio for the blower. Thank you. 
left behind the exhaust flash here. I haven't used any sealant between the rotary valve and the, and the cylinder. And, uh, it did not leak this bad last time though. Last time I increased the idle a lot. I'll turn it down now. And I'm a bit concerned about all the fuel sitting in this hose now. Promising. that leak that's better than last time we'll have to call that a success none of the replacement parts for the leaky bits leaked leak between the rotary valve cover and the cylinder though i knew there would be there's no sealant there but it's not a crucial area of the engine it does show that the rotary valve works though because there's enough pressure to push liquid out behind the valve it runs much better now without the leaks and the lower driver ho it needs a flywheel though Okay, we'll need to get that dyno built now, to test this engine and the PIP engine. No point in just free revving it. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Take me by the hand, making me a man, that one night you made